When she came she took, took, to take her orders, she realized we had all chosen non-meat uh, items. So she said, are you vegetarian? Now, we weren't trying to impress anyone with anything. But the choice in a restaurant was a witness. Amen. Are you listening to me? If we had chosen fried alligator <laughs> and, you know, lobsters and worms. Did you say worms? <laughs> fried alligator. <laughs> Man, that's so funny. Fried alligators, you know, worms. <laughs> okay. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Welcome back again. This is the Open Door TV. We are back. Don't forget again to hit that like button on your way in and that subscribe button as well as that notification bell. And make sure when you click it, you click personalized. So whenever I post a new video, you get to see it. Now, let's get active because today's video is about, um, should I say, should I, should I say, um, a new way of lifestyle or just fashion? But I'm going to stay quiet here and there. I'm going to comment because this is going to be very interesting. So without any delay, let's get active. I don't think we realize the power of fashion. Someone has a skinny jeans, skinny jeans comes into the church. We look in the world and we see an athlete with a mohawk, and the mohawk comes into the church. Somebody in, the, in Hollywood wears a short skirt, short skirts come into the church. A few years ago, I decided to pray before dressing. I literally asked God, what tie should I wear? What suit? Well, I'm very serious. I said, Father, and I hold several ties. I don't have that many, but I hold the ones I have. <laughs> and I said, Lord, which tie should I wear? Do you know just a tie can turn someone off? Are you listening to me? Father, I want to exert maximum effect for you. What tie should I wear? What shirt should it be, white or blue? Those are my usual two choices. Should I wear a black suit, a blue, a gray, a charcoal? And I ask him these things. Let me tell you something. If you do that, let me speak to the ladies first. <laughs> ladies, you're very attractive. God bless you. Don't be angry with me. When Paul speaks of decoration and fashion, he always addresses only the women. Hi. Right. Let me pause right here real quick because that's going to be an interesting take. Um... You know, guys, actually, this is something I decided to implement. When I first heard that video, I was like, whoa. Okay. And now, whenever I'm going to work in the morning, after I pray, I'm like, okay, God, huh, what what pants should I wear? <laughs> I actually started doing that. Um, and, I, and then, for some reason... I don't see where it's going right now. Well, that's mm, when I start to implement that. I don't see where it's going, but I have a feeling that in about two or three months, it's going to be a different me than right now. But I decided to try that. You no, know, asking God, what kind of shirt should I wear? What kind of pants should I wear? And if it's time to go to church, I'm gonna ask him, should I have to wear should I wear a tie? Or what kind of suit should I wear? So I'm actually waiting to see what the end of that is gonna be in my case. But let's actually get back into the um video. God bless you. Don't be angry with me. When Paul speaks of decoration and fashion, he always addresses only the women. 
Is this mic working? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, listen to me. Next time you dress for church or work to go anywhere, you pray to God and say, Father, tell me what to wear. Let me tell you, give you a guarantee, particularly for church. If you pray that prayer and you listen for the voice of the Spirit, the dress styles of the church Okay, in case you lost that part, you said the dress style of the church would change completely. Let's move on. The Lord will tell you, my daughter, change your entire closet. None of it is suitable for my house. And go to Walmart, get a brand new wardrobe. Okay, I'm going to stop it right here because I'm going to show you guys something here about women adorning themselves ladies like he said they are very pretty and so when you dress a certain way anyway first Samuel chapter 2 verse number 9 Bible says in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety. Now, let me look for that word. Let me see what that word shamefacedness actually mean because I wanted to know. Shamefacedness, G127, it means oh, through the idea of downcast eyes, bashfully, that is towards men modesty or towards God. So in a sense, basically, they should dress in a way that it should not be in an immodest way. Dress as if, if you were to walk out, people wouldn't look down on you, basically. So you get to know what that means. Not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but with good works. Meaning, most of the women now they have to they, they think to become pretty, they have to wear all these things. That's why he says, "But which becometh women professing godliness." Even yes. So, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or cast your way, but with good works. So dress with the intent of good works. Meaning, whatever you do, remember what the Bible says, whether you drink or whether you eat or whatsoever you do, do it all to the glory of God. Let's keep, let's keep that in mind. Men, same thing for you too. <laughs> Trust me. There are, I've seen men dressing like with tight shirts, tight suits, tight pants. I'm like, bro, what are you doing? And you wonder why there is homosexuality within the church. But I'm not going to get in there. I need to let him speak. Let's keep on moving. Or Kmart, wherever you shop. <laughs> Dress has to reflect the image of God. I remember many years ago, I came to uh, this part of the world to preach at a, was an Indonesian church somewhere. And the pastor picked me up. He said, are you hungry? I said, yes. Not starving, but hungry. We went to a restaurant. So the lady brought us the menus. So we chose what we wanted. We didn't collaborate. We just chose. When she came she took, took, to take our orders, she realized we had all chosen non-meat uh, items. So she said, are you vegetarian? Now, we weren't trying to impress anyone with anything. But the choice in a restaurant was a witness. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. If we had chosen fried alligator <laughs> and, you know, lobsters and worms, Did you say worms? <laughs> Fried alligator. 
Man, that's so funny. Fried alligators. You know, worms. <laughs> okay. She would not have said, are you carnivores? <laughs> are you with me? Because she's surrounded by carnivores. But she saw a selection pattern that varied from what she was accustomed to. And it touched her heart. And she said, are you vegetarian? Then she said, I want to be a vegetarian, but I can't. I told the pastor, that's a cry for help. Amen. And I said, look, get councils on diets and foods. Have the whole church board sign it. Come back and find this woman. Give it to her. Okay, let me pause right here real quick. Um, when he mentioned get you no know, councils on diet and food, and I agree with him on that part 100%. If the person is struggling, we need to find resources to help them overcome that struggle. But, let me say this to you guys as well. Diets on, councils on diets shouldn't only be to become a vegetarian or on a plant-based diet. Because... <laughs> The councils on diet is also about not, it's also about to teach you how to let your stomach rest. There are people that I know, their stomachs maybe is resting, maybe, if they are sleeping. Even then, if your stomach is full of food, even if you go to sleep, I don't know for sure. But there's a possibility that your stomach is still working. There are people that never let their stomach rest from digestion. I learned that a long time ago. Hey, when I learned about that, you know, five or six hour interval of food, I prayed to like get that working for me. So now I can eat at seven in the morning and at thirteen hundred my belly is now making bubbles being like, hey, I need food. If I had never learned how to restrict myself to hey, I'm gonna eat every five or six hours it wouldn't be like that and actually i have a friend of mine he's a psychologist and one day i hope to get him on the on this podcast so he can teach you guys certain things whenever he can he was teaching me that your stomach works in a way that if you decide to eat a handful of food every six hours your stomach would adjust to that so that every six hours or every eight hours, whatever long you decided, that's when it would start be like, hey, I need more food. <laughs> Amazing. But I digress. So counsels on that and food shouldn't only be for people to become a vegetarian or on a plant-based diet, but it should also be for those who are struggling to keep a, a, a right interval of intake food intake so their stomach can rest in between but let's get back to the video i don't know if you ever did it but that was a cry for help Amen. i was a <laughs> i was leaving south africa and uh, came to the immigration officer as i was coming you know you've got to stand behind a line those of you who travel a lot before you get to the officer. So he said to me, come pastor. I, w I said, why do you call me that? He said, but you look like one. <laughs> this is no joke. The recording angel is hearing me. Now I left him and I went to another officer. You know, in, the, in these days of security, you have to see several people. He said, come preacher. Now, he hadn't heard the interaction with me and the previous person. I said, why do you say that? He said, but it's so obvious that you're a preacher. 
I was living in an airport somewhere, and uh, I came to the, I live in Nigeria, or some West African country. I came to a, the first line of contact with the officials. And he said, come, Bishop. <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I said, okay. I said, why do you call me that? He said, but it's obvious you're a preacher. And he took his hat off. He said, pray for me. <laughs> and I prayed right there at the airport. He said, bless me. He took his hat. He said, bless me. And he bowed his head, and I blessed him. I just shook my head, and I walked away. I was living in another country somewhere. And this, uh, no, I was going to a campus to preach. I was conducting a university crusade in some country. So the guy who was driving me, he and I were traveling, and, you know, I wanted some chewing gum. You know, Americans are always chewing. That's how they identify it abroad, always chewing. And so I pulled into a little gas station. My driver pulled in, and I went to a little store, you know, 7-Eleven kind of thing. I said, do you have a juice? I wanted some juice. The lady said, yes. So she went to get the juice. I observed the juice. The juice was right next to the alcohol. So I said, is that juice? It's right next to the alcohol. She said, I'd never give you alcohol. I said, why not? She said, you're a preacher. <laughs> I said, how do you? She said, but it's so obvious. I left that store, went to the next little store to get gum because the first store had no chewing gum. I said, good afternoon, sir. He said, good afternoon, preacher. <laughs> and I said, wait a minute. Why do you call me that? He said, the anointing is all over you. Now, that began to happen when I started to pray and say, Lord, tell me what to wear. Amen. And God doesn't tell me wear Superman's cape, just simple, basic. But it seems to me, when you attempt to cooperate with God, he moves up in people's hearts Amen. to recognize his presence in you. Amen. Listen to me, you try it. You pray. <laughs> Ladies first, you pray. <laughs> and so, Lord, what should I wear? And when the Spirit speaks, stifle your pride. Suffocate it. Choke it to death. And do what the Spirit says. Choose as the Spirit leads. You will have testimonies that I am giving. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we must reflect the glory of God in everything we do. Next time you go to buy shoes, ladies. <laughs> Pray. For two reasons. One, you want to reflect God's glory. Two, the money is God's money. Come on, say amen. amen. I have been to churches. Have you ever seen men walking on stilts? <laughs> you know, in circus there's a man on a stilt. I have been to churches, and the Lord knows I'm speaking the truth, and I could not understand how these women didn't fall off those shoes. I mean, high. <laughs> Towering over me. I said, if she had prayed, she would not be wearing that. Okay, 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 okay. So, guys, I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys found it very funny, right? But it is true. Um, I have a friend, one of my best friends, he's a pastor. He was telling me the story of how he went to you know, a different country, and some guy came up to him and said, Oh, you are a pastor. He said, Who told you I'm a pastor? He said, I can smell the Holy Spirit on you. <laughs> Yeah. So, guys, you know what? Let me let me leave this on this note. Um, I was talking to my dad about that someday, past time in the past. The idea of dressing modestly is for both men and women. It's not just for men. Also, it's not it's not, it's not just for women. It's also for men. One thing that the Bible says that I think many of us Seventh-day Adventists need to understand is that when it comes to clothing, it is a cultural thing. Meaning, like my dad told me, it's the culture that decides what's the dress for men 
and for women. God simply said this in his word. He said this. Verse number 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. That's another video in, in itself in the future I'm going to make. Um, because of today we got all of that going on. But what that means is the culture decides or the society decides what's the men's clothes and women's clothes. And there should be a clear distinction. In this one, ladies and gentlemen, I'm already starting to start that journey. Every morning now, I wake up, I ask God, what should I wear? Yes. And I'm still seeing it's just brand new, probably like my first week. So I'm still learning. And and I'll let you guys know the progress on that as I go on in this life. And I think you guys should wear, should try it if you want. If you don't want, the conviction is not for you. But if you do want to try it, I think, yeah, give it a shot and let God do its thing. But I'm going to stop it right here because I don't want to make it too long. But before I leave, don't forget again, hit that like button on your way out and that subscribe button as well as that notification bell. And let me, guys, let me know guys what you guys think in the comment section below. And if you have any questions, let me know as well. Again, it was the Open Guard TV. Hope to see you guys again. Until then, bye for now.